Everybody, welcome to Roll or Die. I think this might be even episode 60. Is that right, Kim? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Wow, okay, they're, they're flying by. Today we have uh, Chris Martin joining us. He is, he has a remarkable story, and I'm going to let that unfold for you as we go, as Kim and I are discovering it. Chris came across us through a referral, um, and someone said to us, Georgia said, you you just got to have this guy on your podcast and we absolutely said yes um this is this is an area that we're gonna um like, like often our, our podcasts are about fun and lightness but there's also some serious aspects to jujitsu, some health issues and we want to be able to dive into some of these topics with with these with amazing people with amazing stories like chris as we go so welcome to the show chris thank you i appreciate it and as we record this it's worth noting that um, it's, it's late April of 2021. Um, and you'll probably be, you know, launching this around, you know, end of this month or into yeah. May and in May it is stroke awareness month. Mm. I'm wearing a red combat corner hat. Um, red is represents stroke awareness. And, uh, we do have a survivor group of about mm, a little over a hundred of us. Um, and most of those survivors, um, uh, from strokes are, um, if, uh, if I should say strokes from jujitsu chokes that were the cause, yeah. um, uh, we have a little Facebook group. And so we'll give you the link to that in the show notes. Um, so that if any survivors, a lot of times after these episodes air is when we do get somebody that passes this, you know, shares this, they share this podcast, um, and they just say, Hey, have a listen. And then a lot of times, um, somebody who's had a, a, a similar accident stroke, um, like on the mats, like I did, um, they jump into the Facebook group and it's been a great support, um, for all of us. Wow. So thank you for, uh, so my point is red is stroke awareness month. Um, may is, is I, I I'm, vo- I'm very vocal in may since my, uh, 2017 accident. Um, the reason of my vocalness, um, if that's a word is um, just because uh, when it happened to me, I was completely unaware that Mm -hmm. um, something like this could happen, Mm -hmm. um, number one. And um, whenever I interview somebody else, I wanted, well, the reason I had the blog was I wanted other people to to have a resource to go to, to say, hey, I trained BJJ. I feel like everything was taken away from me. Um, Is there somebody or is there a community or support? And I can get some advice from. And so um, we've created this group um, since my, since the 2017 accident. Um, and, um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people have joined. Um, and so my goal every year in May is just to, to raise awareness within our jujitsu community. So I will write blogs. Um, Mm -hmm. I will share interviews like this, um, in the different Facebook groups I'm in. Some people will get very um, sick of listening to uh, my stories and, uh, or they won't even listen. They just see, um, you know, they, 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 some people equate it to fear mongering is the word that they've used in some of these um, uh, Facebook communities, you know, Reddits and whatnot. Um, And it's not, it's, it's, it's like I said, I I was on the forever white belt podcast just recently. Um, They just released that today. And, um, I said to them, I said, you know, please be empathetic to the fact that the people who are having these strokes are people like myself who, who love this sport so dearly. And the last thing that we'd ever want is for something to come to, um, you know, have a negative light put onto it, onto the sport, because we think it's such a positive thing. Like I do at least. Um, however, um, I, as I said on the podcast, I said, people, when we get in every day that we step on the mat, we do have, we do have a, uh, a choice and a decision. Um, and, um, you know, we have a choice and a decision as to whether or not, you know, we want to fight out of chokes or whether or not we want to be the, the Oki, uh, partner that, you know, let's, let's our partner really launch in those, 
triangle chokes during practice just to make sure it's super tight. <laughs> we have a right and choice to, to do that. Yeah. And, um, and that's fine. But I also believe that um, we have a, um, we have a right to know that there are some consequences if, um, if, if, that we just at least need to be aware of when it comes to neurolo neuro um, the neuro neurological um, conditions. Um, because there is a consequence from the standpoint of, it's like myself, I don't use it. You know, it, it, I, I do have a disability. Um, you can't tell I sound great. Oh, he sounds really great. Well, I appreciate that, um, but there is, you'll see I jump around a lot with my thoughts. They're not, it was the executive functioning on the right side of my brain that shot the clot hit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, I was paralyzed and I know we're, we're jumping around already, but that's okay. You know, there's, there's the, the, there's enough information out there that people, you know, if they really want to hear about what happened to me, there's articles and, and, and blogs and YouTubes, but what, what the jujitsu community needs to know, um, what the practitioners have a right to know um, is that something like this can happen. And so if they can just step back and um, take in the information with the open mind um, that this is, is, it might not be as safe a hundred percent as we think, um, but we're not going to, you know, again, we're not going to, we're not going to change the sport. We're not going to change IBJJ. We're, we're not going to change, but, but what we have to do, it's just like in the NFL, they have protocols for concussions. Like if this happens, then this is where you have to go. And this is the scan that you have to do. Yes. Um, that's where we have to go with the sport because my data that I've accumulated personally since my 2017, my spreadsheet is over a hundred people of those hundred people. Um, some of them are now participating in a medical research paper because the jujitsu community, they said, there's nothing published. There's no information. This is all near say. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I hear you. I hear what you say. Jujitsu community. Um, we're going to get this published and we're going to have it published by a doctor. And he's also going to be a black belt. His name is Sam step plug and he's a doctor in Minnesota. Yes. Um, he works with a hospital. Um, they're helping us with the, get this published, but he is the doctor who's written papers already on the safety of strangles and vascular compression in um, combat sport. And to his research so far, it's safe. Um, he was put into contact with me and we've been, um, I said, yeah, you know, here's some data. I don't know if, if this is interesting to you or not. And right away he was like, whoa, okay. Well, didn't, didn't know that this, this could happen. Didn't. So it was, he said, well, let's, let's, you know, we got to get a paper to, out and basically it's just not it's not a paper other than it's just going to be like here are people this is what they do they experienced a choke that led to a stroke mm -hmm. now so and um the the reason that this information is helpful is because it does help the medical community understand and make the proper diagnosis when they have somebody coming in with certain signs or symptoms, mm -hmm. um, such as, and I'm just going to throw out some examples. Um, it, you, you got, you just got out of a chokehold and the, the room is spinning. Mm -hmm. Like you've had too many margaritas from last night and you're on the Cancun floor on the ground, you know, like the room is spinning. Okay, if that happens during jujitsu, there's a huge problem, and it's not because you're dehydrated, and you do need to get help right away. But the majority of practitioners will chalk that up to dehydration. They will chalk it up to, yeah. you know, just a, a hard night on the mat and some, and and they'll go home and sleep it off. 
the problem with that is, is that mm-hmm. they've ignored the signs. Um, their teammates, their teammates also were not aware of the signs. Somebody did go, somebody goes home. They have a stroke. When you have a stroke, you cannot move. Sometimes you can't move. Like myself, I was paralyzed. I couldn't pick up a phone to call somebody if I wanted to. Even if I could pick up the phone with the left-hand side of my body that was working, I wouldn't have known how to dial 911. I would have known that I was supposed to call 911, but I would not know how to find a way to do it. Wow. And so it's a, it's a living, you're living in a nightmare. Um, there's a gentleman in Texas, um, and he, he had a stroke and, um, um, it was a, a dissection. Um, the dissection is what led to the stroke. Can you please explain a dissection? <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think, and that's, thank you for asking that question. I really also, when you publish this blog, I think it would be a really good idea that instead of you calling it strokes from chokes, like mm-hmm. every other podcast has done so far, mm-hmm. I would, I would something call it along the lines of uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, carotid artery and vertebral artery dissections that lead to strokes. Okay. Right. Or that could, that can lead to strokes. You don't have to do that, but that's my point is, is that what we're finding is that the strokes are being caused by the dissections. So what a dissection would be is a micro tear inside of your carotid artery or your vertebral artery. Mm -hmm. Most people in jujitsu are, you know, they know the word carotids because they've heard people say that, but they also probably don't, they, they probably, unlike I didn't, I've never heard the word vertebral. Vitevral arteries are the arteries that leave to the brain, but they're on the back of your neck. So um, the issue is, is that if you get a micro tear inside the vitevral or the carotids, um, many times uh, what will happen is if the tear needs to repair itself, a clot will be formed mm-hmm. on that tear and mm-hmm. it'll just sit there. And most people there's probably a lot of people that have these micro tears. It doesn't just come from sport. It can come from, you know, mowing the lawn, um, cracking your head at the desk, swinging a golf club, going swimming, going water skiing. There's a, there's a report by a guy named a medical port by a guy named a Schlem. And he just got a random report of where these dissections are coming from. And they were different sports and different activities. So, it can happen doing whatever, but the, the, um, what happens is the clot will sit there. If it's a big tear, that clot might sit there for a little while. And if you really don't give it time to rest and you're not taking like a baby aspirin or something like that, um, it'll just sit there and it might, usually it'll just probably go away for like most people. But the danger for like a jujitsu person is that we're wrestling, hustling, tussling around. So clots are shooting people are shooting from the carotid artery to the brain. And that's what causes the stroke. So it's the dissections are causing the stroke. It's not, it's not a bunch of like old 55 year old, you know, 265 pound diabetics, you know, average American Taco Bell eater guys having these strokes. That's what you would probably think, but it's, these are black belts, brown belts, um, purple belts. I mean, these are guys that have been on the mat for longer than five or six years. Mm -hmm. My guess is the repeated trauma over the course of time is what is causing a lot of these um, uh, injuries not to heal. Uh, I know for my fat, I know for myself, I was probably walking around um, looking back at, because now after I have my stroke, I can look back and I can see all the signs and, and you see everything that you ignored mm. and you, you remember how you felt and everything, but you don't think anything of it when it happens. Um, and so how old I was are you, pro- Chris? Sorry uh, to right now. Um, I just, I just turned 43. 
Um, when I had the stroke, it was in 2017. So I think I was like 39 or almost 40. Yep. Um, and, um, I, I ignored the sign and I was, pr I probably had a, uh, a tear on that carotid for a, a month, maybe two, maybe, maybe two months. It could mm -hmm. have been longer. And it was just, for me, it was one day, it was a deep North South choke that somebody put me in and my brain was screaming for oxygen and I wasn't tapping out, not because I was being stubborn. It just, it wasn't that fully deep yet, you know, that I just wasn't ready to tap. Um, and I really felt that like he was going to adjust and he didn't, but, um, during that time, my body went completely paralyzed on the mat. So, um, I told, I tell that story and I'm like, I was lucky because as bad, mine was so bad. They had to get me to the hospital. Um, what's important to know about, okay. yep. You had your stroke on the mat. Yeah. Got it. So there was yep. a clot, the clot became dislodged in this moment and the clot shot to the brain. And that is the source of the stroke. That's the hundred percent accurate. Yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was, I was, so it, that, and it, so that kind of, that stroke, that was not a, some people call it like a T uh, a TIA, like a little mini stroke. No, it was a full ischemic stroke. Mm. Um, so it's one of the worst that you can have. Mm. Um, but what was lucky for me, during that time of like hor horrific, like the biggest nightmare you, you've ever, you could ever imagine um, is the fact that they had no other choice but to is get me immediately. And then the paramedics, when they got there, they knew what hospital to take me to. They took me to, to Freighter Medical College in Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And that's like the medical college, like that's the state of the art equipment, you know what I mean? And um, my sister said that when the doctor came out of the surgery, because they put me under and then it was like, good luck. You know, that was, it was a good luck surgery. Like, you know, we'll do the best. Um, Cause guys are not coming out of this sometimes. And that's the problem. Okay. So I, that's why it's like, I'm an advocate for this. And, and I know I'm jumping around again, but I'm an advocate for this whole thing. And a lot of people are like, wow, you really sound great. You're doing great. Look at you're on the mat. You're doing jujitsu. Everything's great. Yeah. I've got my little disabilities, but like from the outside, like I'm a horrible advocate. Cause I look like things are great, but the truth is, is like some guys aren't pulling through and, um, uh, a lot of it has to do with the time and, you know, the, the, get the doctor, he, he administered my TPA. My sister said when he came out, he was dripping sweat, like, like, mm. like, 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 uh, just complete adrenaline dump. And he was just, Oh my God. Yeah. All right. It was huge. It was huge clot. Like it was huge. Like when I went to get my, they put a stint in my neck because they said the clot was so big that, they were afraid that it was still going to make its way back to the brain again. So they stinted it. No. Um, and um, so I roll with a stint in my neck, you know, I was, I was saying on the last podcast and I was telling my, one of my coaches um, in Chicago, I, 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 yesterday I walked in to practice and we were just kind of talking about like people not showing up to practice and whatnot. And I'm like, man, I'm like, I'll be honest. Like every time I step on the mat, I wonder to myself if this is my last day, like, because Definitely. it's real. It's and and it's so real that as I record this one week ago, not even five, four days ago, one of the members from our group, Chris Dino, um, uh, he had had a stroke, his first stroke two, two years ago, and he just had another stroke. And this time he didn't live and wow. he, and he has, he has a, um, he has three young kids, you know what I mean? And a young wife, mm. uh, Ted Calloway in, in, in Texas, um, earlier, um, in, um, 2020 mm. or fourth quarter, 2020, uh, just passed away. He had two young kids, you know what I mean? Like that's real. So and it's like my, yeah. What, what, are you, what, what are you advocating? Because like, are you like, are you about tap early? Because obviously that if you can get this shit mowing the lawn, you're not about that. It it's, like it's, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not even that. Like it's, it's, it's just this, it's simple. It's like education and awareness. Yeah. 
because like I said, it goes back, it goes, it goes back to like, everybody has the right to make their own decision, yeah. how they want to play this game. I'm nobody needs to be told how to play, but they have to know what they're playing with. Like you can't throw two people into a swimming pool and say, you know, go swimming, see how long you can stay in here. But then, you know, you got to get to the other side, but then, Oh, by the way, there's two sharks underneath you. You know what I mean? Like they have no idea. So it brings a whole nother element to the game. You know, it's an, you have to know. So my avocation is, awareness and it is 95 not no 98 percent of the people that has had a stroke from jujitsu had no idea that this could happen to them 98 percent of those people um coaches had no idea so safety was never even a conversation yes my first coach in in you know mm-hmm. i still have like you you know how like you have those like little like the coach in the back of your head when you're rolling and your coach is not theirs, like whoever had kind of influence. And so I had this one coach and I remember him on the side, don't you tap, Mm. don't you tap. And you know what I'm saying? Like that, that has never left me. And so I hear that, but it's just like that, that is the kind of, um, that's kind of what we're playing with. And, and especially when you get people, uh, practicing for sport jujitsu. Yeah. <clears throat> Funny thing about that is I, I posted a little, la- I, I was having a conversation with somebody and I'm like, you know, a lot of these dissections are coming when the athlete is training for a big IBJJ or Pan Am. How could you know and, that? Uh, be- well, because you, because uh, uh, you ask them uh, oh. and it's on the interviews with that you say, you know, what they'll, they'll tell you like right away. So like, what's your story? What's your story? Yeah. Oh, it's getting ready for Pan Ams. You know what I mean? Oh, I was rolling like a beast. Yeah. Everything was on point. You know what I mean? And it's true. Yeah. And, but, and then all this, and it, but you know, they're, they're, they're starving themselves. They're, you know, they're overtraining probably they're not getting enough sleep. Um, I remember, early in my days it was like weird it was like every time i started to ramp it up for a jiu-jitsu tournament i I would get sick Mm. and my early coach used to make fun of me he's like dude you don't have to compete bro i'm like no i swear i'm getting sick it's not my fault i i swear um i actually too and i was uh, a lot of times i was getting mrsa Anton, so are I, you nodding here because he's training up for a big tournament at the moment? All of these boxes, man, you got me shitting myself here. <laughs> hey, so so you know that awareness as you're getting ready for that tournament, like that. So we're making progress here. You know, you're getting ready for a tournament. You're hearing me tell you like these things do happen. So like, don't be afraid to tap a little bit earlier in in your practice right now. You like save that like you know loop choke escape for the i for the tournament that you're getting ready for Mm. like then like on that mat Mm. like take your chances that day you know you got yourself in a loop choke you know don't fight out of it like you shouldn't have got there in the first place like you're just let it go that's the hard that is hard for a lot of people that's hard for me um i've gotten really better at tapping and um you know, not fighting out of, you know, stuff that's sunk in, mm. um, going back to your initial question on the carotid tears and the vertebral tears, when you're playing in the, in the lapel gi, like that adds a whole nother element to leverage. And that leverage is being leveraged against that carotid artery. And you're getting a lot of pull. Mm. I think there's a lot of damage. I think if you want, like, I, this is just my gut instinct, but if you ask me, like those bow and arrow chokes, I think are causing a lot of uh, cause a lot of damage. So yeah. just be aware of that. Um, somebody, if you know somebody gets on your back and they get that bow and arrow, yeah. like let yeah. it go because you feel safe for so. And if you think about it, like there's so much torque. And those carotids, because they're pulling your back and pulling your leg, your whole spine is bending and you're exposing those carotids. Yeah. 
And that's and, my number one submission. So now I'm going to have hey. to come up with a whole new game. No, no, you got you, you got you, you got to keep taking that submission. Yeah. You know, it's a great yeah. submission to play. You know, beg them yeah. to tap. But, Just beg them to tap. So look, I yeah. long term harm coming to you. Please yeah, tap. That's it. Very and much. Chris, you, you mentioned that you're still training. So do you have to modify your training at all? Or yeah, hundred hundred percent. Um, so my training now it's, I just got off the phone with a real, my, my, my BJJ stroke survivor, BFF, um, Caroline, and she's, she's in Louisiana and she's been, she's been a black belt. For, she's, she started training when she was 18. Um, and she's been training for like 21 years. I'm not going to say her age, but you do the math. <laughs> never say a woman's age, but she's been training jujitsu hard for 21 years. And we were talking tonight just about like the fact of like, you don't have that opportunity anymore to, to be like relaxed and let people work and, and hmm. um, let people get, you know, like somebody gets on my lapel, I start to have PTSD. Like I'm going to die, hmm. you know? Um, people grabbing lapels, people passing guards, you passing guard, like you just have to do things when it comes to your neck, you have a greater sense of urgency. So like grip fighting and standing up in the guard, like, dude, there's no reason like as a stroke survivor, like there's no reason you should be sitting on your knees inside somebody's guard. You better stand and pass because mm. I don't care if I get swept or you break my, I, I don't want to die. So like I'm standing, you know, my posture, like stuff like that. That's one thing. So a sense of urgency with grips. And then also it's, it's having a more active, like you got to play a active, uh, active guard and uh, also um, a really good half guard with, you know, and just kind of know where your neck is and kind of play deep underneath and play, you know, just make sure you control that, that cross phase, um, and play under, you know what I mean? So spider guard and half guard, deep half, deep half is kind of nice. You know what I mean? Like, cause you're, 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 your neck's kind of protected and you're underneath them. So you're really not going to get X choked or else they get swept. Um, but that being said, like that, that's, that's kind of my game for what I have to play. Um, but I don't shoot. Um, I don't like to, I don't like to, to stand up too much. Like I'm a butt scooter guy now because I just don't want to play any type of, you know, neck com compression. Mm. Um, and you try and gee and no gi or. Yeah. I'm majority gi. I'm majority gi. I, I just, I don't, I'm, I'm, I just love the gi so much. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, I play, you know, sitting, sitting lapels, you know, Deli Hiva, you know, I try to manage distance between my opponent and my neck. And then when we're close quarters, I, like I said, I like, I like the deep half guard to, cause I, my, I, I can just protect my neck. So, but it's not the same aggression. You know what I mean? It's not the same fight, fight to win, you know, that, that I, I used to have and I'm okay with that. Um, are, I your also health, have a, are your health professionals aware that you're still training and are they okay with that? Like what was the feedback I mean, like on that? They kind of know. I mean, they don't kind of know. They definitely know. I mean, of course they're going to say like not a good idea, probably, you know, limit, limit the amount of compression on the neck, you know, limit this, limit that. But they also know that, you know, your guy like myself, you know, he's going to do it. You know, I've been training for 14 years now and it's, part of my life. Um, the advantage that I have as a stroke survivor though, after having 14 years of jujitsu is the fact that I have control of the game versus somebody who might be like a white belt or a blue belt. It's like, they're still kind of learning like where they can put their head and how they can sit up and, yeah. 100%, you know, that's yeah. kind of dangerous. Yeah. 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 And so you're a purple belt, is that no, right? Uh, I'm a brown belt. Oh, you're a brown belt. Uh, wow. Yeah, I got my brown belt from Mark Lehman in two years ago. Wow. So after the stroke, okay. After wow. the stroke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I ask around the resistance that you get from the BJJ community? Because I do get that it's a scary thing, you know, for, for BJJ people to even admit that this could be hurting. Oh, we've got less than 10 minutes left, by the way. Just um, let you. you both know. Yep. Keep it time. Uh, 
Yeah, so so the resistance that you get, do you think the source of that is that they think that BJJ is going to change or do you think that, I mean, you've said the word fear-mongering, but to me it doesn't occur like fear-mongering. It looks like awareness raising that if there is a stroke or if you're feeling like, I mean, I know one of our guys from our gym spent four days lying on his lounge room floor. He'd been to BJJ. He went home. I'm not saying this is BJJ related or anything. I'm not trying to point any blame. He went home from BJJ and then had his stroke and then spent four days lying on his floor until someone who I won't mention went that, you know, is part of our community went and kicked in his door and rescued this guy. Um, he's a very dear friend. Members of our club go and visit him in hospital all the time. His life is permanently altered, unlike yep. you who's back on the mats. You know, we really hoped for that for a long time. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um, but the thing is that the resistance, like how could we be resisting as a community something that could even have prevented that? Like, like I, I'm not saying that it, like I'm just saying like people going home, if they live alone and, and they're going home and they're feeling like they've got to have a buddy that checks in with them, for example, just to say, especially if you're in your city. Well, I mean, well, let, let's, let's stop there. I mean, great, great, great questions. Um, number one is understanding the signs um, you're going to link to my blog and then on May 1st, I'm going to have a very well written um, it's already halfway done um, co- collaboration with, with some people um, who helped me write um, in regards to the signs for jujitsu people. Mm. Um, anything related to um, eye blurry vision um vertigo, um, uh, balance issues, falling over, uh, a droopy side of your face. Um, again, uh, speech issues, having trouble saying basic things. Mm. Anytime that happens after you've experienced a traumatic experience, whether that is going on a roller coaster and you just, you know, you came off the roller coaster and you have vertigo and blurry vision that could have caused the carotid artery dissection. But what, but what I see most in my community is these guys that we're training with and girls on the mats. It's it. And it's not just guys. There's, there's probably more girl like in jujitsu overall, there's, there's a lot of girls in our group, females, and I think that that's unique because in the total community overall, I don't see j- females as a, a large population. They're, they are a, a very small minority. Yes, and so f- to have that amount of females in our group tells me, well, uh, it, 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 it's, it's just real. You know what I mean? And, and I guess it also tells me that from a female perspective, their necks might be built a little bit differently than ours too. So I don't know that, but I'm just, that's just a, something I find, but um, everybody in my group had some type of neurological signs or issues. Some of them went and got treatment right away. Some of those, some of those people, what, like you said, went home, you know, and the, what, what you just said was what, what do we need to do? Like, do we go home with them as buddies? No, it's, we get them to the hospital. We, and when we get to the hospital, it's like, listen, Charlie, I know you don't want to go. I know you don't have health insurance, whatever that is. Oh, by the way, you should have called jujitsuinsurance.com. That's just a little plug that I'm going to throw in there. I do help people find affordable health insurance. Um, if, if, if in America, um, if, if they don't have it because it, it, it is affordable, but, um, it, the, the protocol is to get them to the right care right away because there's a neurological issue right now mm. they experience. It's not go home with them. It's, it's go to the doctor with them and they might not want to go, but that's, that's kind of the awareness in the community. The, there is not a lot of research and we are, like I said, we're working on the medical article with that. We're going to be, I'm going to be posting information about signs to look for Mm -hmm. as, as, as you've, as you heard me say, like anything related to like your training and you got caught in a choke and you have neurological stuff going on, 
with the brain, the vision, the speaking, that is not right. And that's all you need to be aware of. And, and you may have a dissection and be okay. And that might be the sign. Like that's your body is giving you signs. You might not have the stroke until later on. So that's where, you know, kind of how you mentioned, you know, you had a friend that was home or home alone. That's like my biggest fear. I, whenever I'm alone by myself, I don't like to be alone since my stroke because I am training, you know, I, 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 I would be scared that like, I did have a hard night of training and I'm in the shower and then it hits. And then like, dude, that's like the biggest nightmare because I've been in that. But when I had it happen to me, like there's people around me on the mats. So the whole time I had humans helping me Yeah, and to be caught and not knowing when somebody else is going to come like that is, that's a nightmare. And, and it does happen to people. Most of the survivors have been lucky and it hasn't happened to them. Uh, the, the gentleman I mentioned in Texas, Ted, he, 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 he was uh, left alone by himself and he was not found until too many hours later. And that is what cost him his life. So in the stroke world, they say the signs are, could, are be fast. And the reason it's be fast is because there's acronyms. Like, like I said, it'll be in my blog article, yeah. but the fast word is what's important because you can get medicine and you can get treated, but it's gotta be right away. It's sure. gotta be right away. So the protocols have to be as simple as this. People like you who are doing this podcast are going to share this with your coaches and those coaches are going to have that opportunity to just completely brush this thing under the rug and just like, I'm not going to give us a list and this is bad for the sport, bad for business, mm -hmm. or they're going to just take the time to listen and just do a little bit of research. Yep. If, 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 if they do that and they do just do a little bit of conversations with students, understanding, bringing safety into maybe the beginning programs, you know, having safety conversations more frequently, kind of like how OSHA does for like um, in, in America, we have like safety regulations and businesses mm -hmm. for like, you know, heavy items and toxic chemicals. Like you have to follow regulations because stuff can happen. It's mm. just protocols. Mm. Having those safety protocols are going to be important because it is going to save people's lives. Okay. Um, you are going to hear more stories like this over the years to come a hundred percent. The reason is, is because of the rise in popularity of jujitsu yeah. people 10 years ago, weren't practicing it to the amount that they are now. Yeah. Look, man, I really want to thank you so much, Kim. I'm happy yes. to see the wrap up. I've made some notes. Sure, yeah, we've got just a minute and a half to go. All yeah. right, the wrap up. Do you want to say anything, Kim? No, thank you so much, Chris, for taking the time. This is a really important message. As Anton said, I mean, our podcast is usually pretty light and fluffy, so this might be a bit of a shock to some of our listeners. A little bit heavier no, listening, all it but takes very is important one person. message. All yeah, it takes is one person. So yeah. 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 So next month is stroke month, stroke month. So thank you again, Chris, for being yep. on. Um, I really, uh, we're going to put all the links in as you've suggested, whatever you send us, we're going to put in. Thank you so much for being a stand for educating the BJJ community, because I think, you know, people may sweep this under the rug, but also for a long time, they swept knee injury under the rug, let's say. And eventually, no, now we do knee stuff to make our knees healthier. Like parts of our body are exposed. So I thank you for being a stand at a time where people are going to push back against you. But the fact that you're still in the jiu-jitsu community means you actually do give a fuck about the jiu-jitsu community. So I thank do. you for that. Yeah, and thank you. Um, yeah, I really just I, just, I just admire who you are and what you're up to. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you both thank of you. you. I'll talk. I'll see you around. Speak soon. Bye. Good luck at your tournament. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.